All right, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Hey Google, what day is it today? It is Tuesday, the 9th of July, 2019. So it's day number nine. Today is the first day that I get to get out on a long ride. I'm kind of excited. I'm a little nervous, but you know, it's just, uh, Coach Jasper says I have to hit 60K. Today's video is gonna be breaking down a 60K journey and, and what you're gonna do during a long ride. So, you know, I've got my nutrition, just like you've seen in previous videos with Chris Kinnear. And I think this video is gonna open up a lot of possibilities for other things to come, so stay tuned. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe. No, no, that's not subscribe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. I wanna hear from you guys. What are you guys saying about these videos? What do you like the most? What's your biggest takeaway? And you know, what should I be doing in the future? So I wanna hear from you. Until further ado, let's get at it. All right, so Jesse, we have uh, a couple of different ways that we can apply what I would call training stress to your body. Now, that, that, the way training works, pretty simple. Uh, you stress your system or you apply like a certain amount of load uh, and then you recover and you adapt and get stronger. So we've done some hill reps with you and on the hill reps, that's what we would call intensity or higher end training stress. Uh, the other way to get some training stress is uh, through volume and that's duration. And that's what you experienced in the, the long ride, which was great. Uh, we're building you up. You know, we have the Ride to Conquer Cancer, which is a couple of back-to-back -back days around 100K, right? Which yeah. is a pretty pretty big thing to bite off if you haven't ridden a bike much. So part of my goal is to make sure that mentally, you know you can handle the distance. Um, but also physiologically, like what's actually gonna happen in your body, we want you to uh, experience that and have that kind of training stress, and then you will uh, adapt and get stronger. Uh, so when you did your 60K on the weekend, that was the, the first sort of long ride, and we're going to build you up, I think, to 110, 120K. You know, you probably noticed a few things. It was uh, quite long in duration, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, comfort was an issue at one point. Okay, so I'm at about a 30-kilometer ride so far, um, and I have to say... I really need to look into some shorts, uh, some biking shorts. I was against them. I thought, you know, I'm just gonna run with like yoga shorts, uh, but <laughs> I need some padded ones because uh, you know how it feels when you get kicked in the midsection and <laughs> not that feeling, but like five minutes later, just really numb. If I'm going to run with a skinny seat, I really need to figure out some clothing. Also, nutrition became an issue. Um, so lots of things happen in a long ride that don't necessarily happen in a short ride. Uh, the real goal with a long ride is just to be steady. Uh, you don't need to go hard for the entire time. Uh, and by steady, if we're, if we're using perceived effort, let's just say 65 to 75% effort. If you were riding with somebody, you'd, you'd want to be riding at a pace that you could carry on a conversation with them. So that's a good measure. If you're too breathless to actually talk to the person next to you, uh, then you're going too hard. Uh, but likewise, on the other end, you don't wanna to be too easy either. You don't wanna to be too sloppy and kind of just doing nothing. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of right in the middle there and just steady riding and that amount of volume, like that amount of time, will be a, a great training stress for you. And we're gonna do that every week. Awesome. Okay, so one of the ex things I think you experienced on that long ride, Jesse, was that you started to feel pretty hungry yeah. at one point, right? So nutrition on longer duration rides is really important. So in our bodies, we have about 60 to 90 minutes of stored glycogen uh, in our muscles. So basically that's the amount of carbohydrate that we have available to us uh, okay. in our muscles. And once we run out of that, it's called bonking. And I think you experienced a little bit of that. And that's mm -hmm. actually a good thing because now you will have a visceral reaction to the idea of bonking. Uh, and it's really important, especially for two back-to-back -back days of 100K, uh, that you're keeping on top of your during-ride nutrition. 
My bonkage. So your bonkage, yeah, sure. Um, so 60 to 90 minutes is about what we have. So if you're doing a ride that's an hour to an hour and a half, eh, you don't really need nutrition during that time. After, for sure, we can talk about that uh, later. But during, for a two to three hour ride, you need to be consuming mostly carbohydrate uh, throughout the ride. Uh, really simple. You want to do small amounts frequently. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to get through sort of 500 to 750 milliliters of fluid per hour. Um, and in that fluid, usually you're going to be doing a sport drink. Um, and in that sport drink, you'll also have sodium and carbohydrate, which are the, the three things that you want to be checking off for your long rides are sodium and carbohydrate and water. And usually in a sport drink, you're going to get all three of those. Yeah, Chris is hooking, hooking me up. Yeah, Chris is, Chris is your nutrition guy. Yeah. He's going to hook you up with really great stuff. Um, and then you want to consume small amounts frequently so that at the end of an hour, you've consumed, uh, you know, roughly about a bottle. That's a good sort of rough measure. You want to say be around 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrate. Uh, and then probably for you in, in this event, maybe 500 to 750 milligrams of sodium. And again, with the sport drink, you're going to cover off most of those things. And then you can supplement it a little more with a bar or a gel uh, or some other things. But it's very simple. There's three things you need to consider uh, and small amounts frequently, and you'll be good to go for hours and hours and hours. Okay, I'll get another water bottle and I'm good to go. Good to go. Two water bottles on your bike's good for what you're doing, for sure. 